what is up guys we are back with another video and today it is a bios video and we're checking out the bios here on the asrock x570 phantom gaming itx tb3 that is their mini itx x570 motherboard it's one of only a handful of mini itx x570 boards out there so it's a really exciting board um, this is just going to be the BIOS overview. Of course, we'll have an overview of the board coming up as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. But when you go right into the BIOS, you're on this sort of main screen. And the thing that's really interesting is that ASRock has sort of gone away from their easy mode. Typically with most motherboards, we see an easy mode. We see something, you know, that allows us to easily, you know, enable XMP profiles, set our boot priority, you know, change fan settings like right you know right when you load into the bios but there's no easy mode at all so you know we're kind of doing the advanced mode we're kind of just diving right into the bios just like all new bioses of course you can use your mouse and keyboard no problem we'll go over to the first tab here and this is oc tweaker and this is everything that you're going to need to fully tune your system um the big thing here of course is cpu frequency and voltage change um, if you're doing any overclocking or manual overclocking, you'll just put that on manual. And of course you can see, you can go ahead and set everything. Um, SMT modes, DRAM information. Of course, if you're enabling an XMP profile, you just, you know, you can see we have our XMP profile for our memory right there, and we can easily go ahead and enable it. They also have set profiles for a couple, you know, really fast memory kits. You can see we have a Trident Z Royal 4200 megahertz kit, a Corsair Dominator Platinum 4200 megahertz kit, and a Giel's Super Loose uh, RGB Sync 4200 megahertz kit. So if you're having trouble getting those to load, they're already set in the BIOS, so you don't have to do much of that. As we go down here, we can see our DRAM timings. Of course, you can go through all of these and you know set all of your timings to what you want. But again, if you just enable your profile, it should do all of that for you. Voltage configuration, again, we have a bunch of different voltage settings. Um, the things that you really wanna change is your voltage mode. It's set on stable mode here. You can go into OC mode and change some things around. Um, you also want to, you might wanna mess with your load line calibrations. And on the side here, you can see a description of what, you know, what each level does. I would suggest keeping it on auto because if you're not doing any hardcore overclocking, auto will be just fine. But if you're doing some fine tuning um, as far as overclocking goes, you might wanna you know, change the level to whatever would be best for your overclocking scenario. DRAM voltages, everything there. We also have user profiles. So you know, if you have like a gaming profile, an OC profile, a certain you know, high OC that you were able to achieve. You can actually save them here. You can load them as well. So it's really easy there. We'll go over to the advanced tab right here. And this is sort of like all of your onboard devices and CPU configuration, USB, things like that. So CPU configuration, we can turn on different things and turn them off. Almost everything is enabled besides the FTPM switch because we don't have a TPM uh, device connected to our board. And it also gives you all of the information on your processor. So again, you can see that we're running a Ryzen 9 3900X there. Onboard devices configuration. Um, again, just different things like your front panel audio, you can turn on and off. Um, you can enable WAN, Bluetooth on and off. Uh, the PS2 Y cable you can you know enable or disable. So things like that are in here. Storage configuration, again, SATA controllers. Um, and then your device list. So we only have one drive connected and you can see it is a crucial drive there. ACPI stuff in here, you can go ahead and see all that. Trusted computing, again, we don't have a device found. AMD CBS, and there's all these different options, um, which I won't go into detail on. And then AMD PBS, again, you can see, you know, the bus interface, all that kind of stuff that you might want to mess around with, you can go ahead and do that in here. And then AMD overclocking, when you go into here, again, you have to accept this. This is like every X570 BIOS that we see. In order to get into AMD overclocking, we have to accept this warning that we could damage our processor. We hit accept and then you can, you know, go into eco mode, enable or disable it, precision boost overdrive, enable or disable it, SOC, uncore, 
enable or disable. It's pretty much all you get. This would be the same settings as the Ryzen master software. So get out of that. And then UEFI, again, like full HD, um, active page on entry. So when you go into the BIOS, if you wanna to go to a certain page, you can go ahead and change that if you want. Under tools, we have some cool things. So there are RGB LEDs on this board. And what's nice is if you don't wanna install the Polychrome Sync software, you don't really have to. If you have a, you know, a setting that you like, you can go through the different settings. They're all here. You can set the time uh, in milliseconds and then apply it. You don't have to install Polychrome Sync if you really don't want to. Uh, you can do it all here in the BIOS. SSD secure erase, love to see this. If you're getting rid of an old SSD, you wanna do a secure erase. Same thing with an NVMe drive. Um, you know, just makes it easy to, you know, fully erase so somebody can't go back and get your information. And then we have instant flash, which allows you to easily, easily flash your BIOS through a USB drive. It just works super simple there. Hardware monitor, this is gonna give you all of your temperatures and voltages and fan speeds uh, in real time. So you can see everything there. And then, you know, your fan settings, um, you can go ahead and, you know, we have standard mode, performance, full speed, silent, and you can customize it as well. Um, and you can set all of your duties and things like that for your fans, which is kind of nice. Oops, we'll go back to standard and um, all that stuff you can set for your fans. So it's kind of nice you can set all of your fans and do it all in the BIOS before you even you know, install Windows. Under security, you can set a supervisor password as well as a user password and set up secure boot if you want. And then under boot, we have our boot options and things like that. Um, you know, full screen logo, as I said, fast boot and things like that. And then under exit, we of course, we can save our changes, we can discard our changes, we can load the defaults, which I like to see. Um, I mess things up in the BIOS all the time. So to have, you know, just the, the ability just to start from scratch without clearing the CMOS completely, um, I do like that. And then boot override, I love to see boot override. It's pretty much a default now, in almost all, every BIOS that we see, but it allows you to, you know, install Windows from a flash drive and then when your system reboots, you know, you don't have to hurry up and take that flash drive out to override the boot priority. You just boot from it once and then it's gonna go to the C drive. So I like that as well. It's a pretty simple BIOS. It's easy to find everything. There wasn't a, a setting or anything like that that I couldn't find. Um, it's snappy, like it's not laggy or anything like that. But like I said, I would have liked to see an easy mode. It's just for beginners. I think that having an easy mode would make things so much better. Um, you know, f just fast settings for, you know, um, XMP profile and fan speeds and boot priority, or even a favorites menu. Like there's no favorites menu in this either. So if I could add the settings that I use the most to a favorites menu, it would be nice to see that as well. But if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.